Hi, my name is Buck Black and I'm a therapist in Lafayette, Indiana. I want to speak with you about panic disorder, phobias, and anxiety today. There is such a thing as healthy anxiety. Anxiety is a natural emotion that we all have and it helps us to survive. If there is a car coming at you while you're walking down, this, down the sidewalk, that anxiety can help you to get right out of the way. Um, another example is um, if you're anxious about an upcoming event, it's going to help you to prepare, so that's going to go more smoothly. And um, maybe anxiety, a little bit of anxiety is enough to get you out of, out of bed and get you motivated. So if we look at anxiety as causing a problem, well, when does it do that? Basically, it's when it causes impairment. So if you're avoiding social situations, if you're just becoming really overwhelmed, it might cause difficulty with concentration. In more extreme cases, you can't leave the house. Um, maybe difficulty sleeping. Those are all some really common examples of impairment that is due to anxiety. What causes panic, phobia, and anxiety, you might ask? Well, a lot of different things. So if we look at, um, you know, as far as any kind of panic or just generalized anxiety, a lot of times that can come from uh, past abuse. Maybe that's more related to PTSD, which is a type of anxiety disorder. If we look at phobias, a lot of times that is more of classical conditioning. So essentially you were exposed to a particular object um, and you had a bad experience. A lot of people are afraid of clowns, maybe that you had a bad experience around a clown, so therefore you become um, very afraid and phobic of a clown. That would be an example. Um, and then it, it is important to mention that uh, sometimes the phobias of clowns specifically um, is because the person has a great difficulty um, discerning the uh, level of, of threat. They can't assess the level of threat coming from the clown because they have makeup on. And that happens as a child, so therefore uh, they're more likely to carry that into adult life that they're just very afraid. So uh, that's actually a pretty common phobia. Genetics, that is uh, commonly plays into anxiety disorders. So if, if your parents had uh, anxiety, if they've dealt with anxiety throughout their life, it's more likely that, that you will also have anxiety. People with panic and phobia seek help often when uh, there's more than just the uh, phobia and panic going on. So for example, uh, they might use substances in order to cover these anxious feelings to try to to help them self-medicate and then that causes uh, their own particular problems. Somatic problems, so that would be in the body um, as far as stomach problems, maybe uh, pain in the chest, um, eczema would be another example that, that can be caused by anxiety. There, there's a variety of physical problems and I must uh, point out that it's very important to get yourself checked out physically before you just simply assume that it's anxiety, especially with chest pain. A lot of times people come in for relationship problems so um, you know really it's because they're anxious and they have difficulty concentrating and they can't relay their feelings and, and that sort of thing but it, but it manifests itself in, in a relationship problem. Mood disorders would be another one. If a person is really stressed out and anxious, they can, um, they can also have depression and they might appear to be moody and that would be another reason they come in for help. So medication or therapy. Since I'm a therapist, it is my bias that I want to uh, help a person to change their thinking, change their thought patterns, teach them coping skills. Um, develop more insight into why they're doing these behaviors and how to stop before we look at adding medication uh, to the mix. If you're able to change uh, your level of anxiety or phobia or panic attacks uh, without medication, then, then that's so much better than adding chemicals to your body. If you are uh, if you have little success in a few sessions, then we would refer you for a medication assessment with a doctor. And um, typically, if you uh, are in need of medication, 
uh, anti antidepressants are a place to start out. Um, those are non-addictive and often help quite a few people suffering from these conditions. Sometimes they require anti-anxiety medication and the anti-anxiety medication, particularly the benzodiazepines, have a potential for addiction um, and should be used for the short term. So again, we need to be very careful with that. So I just want to point that out. So one example uh, would be cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy. That's how uh, what we do in therapy to help a person with uh, any of these anxiety issues. Help them with positive self-talk. Help them to to monitor monitor their feelings and to keep an keep an eye on what they're thinking. Um, as far as changing their environment, you know, it's it's just fine to to take a time out to let the anxiety pass. Uh, get yourself out of such a chaotic situation. You know, just changing your environment can do quite a bit. Exposing yourself to sunlight. Um, as simple as that may sound, there's so many people that are in their houses that, uh, you know, they don't get outside. And that adds to their anxiety and maybe depression. So amazingly enough, uh, studies show that CBT achieves... Uh, a panic-free status in 70 to 90 percent of clients suffering from panic attacks. So 70, not, 70 to 90 percent effective. That's that's pretty huge. I also want to point out that there is a link between food and anxiety. Um, if you look at food as medicine, I think that's uh, very interesting. People who eat a lot of fast food, processed food, uh, food with sugar, caffeine, that all adds to anxiety and depression, and you can definitely Google that and uh, to verify this, this claim that I'm making here. Um, also, any kind of substance abuse adds to anxiety and depression, just mood problems in general. So anyhow, that's a little bit of information that I wanted to share with you regarding the spectrum of anxiety disorders. Thank you very much.